My name is Eric Coslin, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Systems, and I'm going to discuss and demonstrate clustering of virtual firewalls. Clustering is a technology that allows multiple firewalls to be utilized as a single logical device. This allows pay as you grow, adding nodes as required as your needs increase. You can cluster up to 16 nodes depending upon the platform you're using. This may provide resilience, dependent upon the external load balancing solution. For physical devices, one typically uses Ether Channel. An Ether Channel with MACP will provide resilience. For virtual devices, the situation is a bit more complicated. Virtual devices require that the load balancer is capable of connection rehashing. That is, when a node is lost, the ability to move the packets of that connection to another node. This is unfortunately only available on certain load balancers. Originally, clustering was invented for physical Cisco ASA firewalls. Later, after the introduction of the Cisco Secure Firewall Threat Defense, it was extended to physical models of that firewall. Recently, it's been extended to virtual devices, and that is the subject of this presentation. Let's go over the clustering concepts. The nodes of the cluster can have several roles. There is the control node, which synchronizes the cluster configuration. For any given flow, the flow owner is simply the node that receives the first packet of the flow. The flow owner will contact the flow director, which is deterministic, and the flow director will keep track of the owner. If a different node receives a packet that is not the first packet of the flow, it will query the flow director. The flow director will tell it where the flow owner is and the packet will be redirected to the flow owner. This guarantees that one node receive every packet of the flow. The communication between the nodes goes through a cluster control link. In particular, the connection state is shared, so there are two copies of each connection state within the cluster for resilience. Node discovery and health check is also done through the cluster link. Furthermore, when packets need to be sent to the flow owner, this packet is sent through the cluster control link. Note that when we talk about sharing state, we're talking about sharing the connection state, not detailed information about the threat analysis of the flow. However, that is not necessary because all of the packets are being analyzed by the same node. Unless a node were to go down during an attack, which is extremely unlikely. In order to understand how we port clustering to the cloud, we have to understand a VXLAN and a related concept of a Geneve. Both of these are encapsulation protocols. The VXLAN was introduced to overcome the challenge of large cloud deployments. You can have a large number of VXLANs, much more than you could have VLANs. But the metadata was very limited. So Geneve was introduced to accommodate the changing virtualization capabilities and needs. The key difference being that it provides an extensible header format so that metadata can be communicated to nodes. This is exactly what is required for service chaining in the cloud. So how are these used in Cisco firewalls? Well, VXLAN can be used to communicate between any network devices. And that's actually been supported for a long time with the ASA firewall. And it's even been supported for a long time with the Cisco Secure Firewall Threat Defense. But it required FlexConfig to get into the data plane and manipulate the configuration. However, in the 7.2 release, native support was introduced. The role of VXLAN in clustering is going to involve the cluster controlling and the intercommunication between the nodes.
on Geneve was introduced in the 7.1 release. This is only supported in AWS and has a very limited specific use. It is used in order to communicate with the gateway load balancer. So let's go over some of the technology required to understand the demonstration. The VTAP, Virtual Tunnel Endpoint, is the data interface that is used to communicate between peers. For example, gigabit 00, gigabit 01. The NVE, or Network Virtual Edge, is the component of the firewall that performs the encapsulation and de-encapsulation of the packets and then specifies the VTAP that the packet is to be sent out or received from. The VNI is the virtual interface that you actually use as a source of the packets that you send through the VXLAN or Geneve tunnel. It specifies the NVE, and the NVE would then encapsulate the packet and send it out to VTAP. Multiple VNIs can use the same NVE. To port Cisco cluster to the cloud required several modifications. In the physical cluster, typically Ether channel was used, but Ether channel is not available in virtual clusters. Fortunately, there was something called individual interface mode, where each node had a different IP address, and that is required for virtual clusters. For physical devices, the cluster control link utilizes a proprietary protocol over IP. And what you would do is increase the MTU by 100 bytes for that cluster link so that you could encapsulate a packet that had to be communicated between two nodes. For the virtual cluster, we take the packet, we encapsulate it in VXLAN and then in UDP. So we now have the overhead from the cluster metadata as well as the VXLAN encapsulation. Hence, we have to increase the MTU by 160 bytes on the cluster link to avoid fragmentation. And finally, there's a lack of broadcast capability in certain clouds. Therefore, although in the physical world, the cluster control link typically uses dynamic node discovery with broadcast, in the virtual world, the cluster control link will use unicast, sending unicast packets to a static list of potential peers. So how do you configure clusters? Let's start with the physical clusters. On the Firepower 4100 at 9300, cluster configuration does not use the firewall management center. Instead, you have an underlying operating system called FXOS, the Firepower Extensible Operating System, and that is used to bootstrap the cluster, typically using the chassis manager. One node is then registered to the FMC, and the FMC will dynamically discover the other nodes. This is called auto registration. Once the cluster is discovered by the management center, the management center is used for all subsequent configuration of the cluster. However, the newly introduced 3100 model does things differently. Clusters are configured using the management center which means you register each device separately and then you form a cluster with a special management center feature. Again, once the cluster is formed, subsequent configuration is done on the cluster by the management center. Now in the virtual world, we have both of these solutions too. In the public cloud, we configure clusters like we do on the 4100 or 9300 in a sense, but there's no FXOS. Instead, we use the day zero configuration. The cluster is created before the management center is brought into the picture. One node is registered and the remaining nodes are discovered and auto-registered. However, the private cloud is configured much in the same way the 3100 is configured. The cluster is configured using the FMC. You register each device and then you build the cluster within the management center. This is an example of the day zero configuration. 
This applies to the public cloud. You can see of standard bootstrapping information like the password and, and host name firewall mode. But in addition, there are a few lines that are important for the cluster, including the cluster subnet range. These are all the potential IP addresses used by the cluster, and it's typically the entire subnet so that you can use DHCP on that subnet. So let's see what this looks like. First, we're going to do a private cloud clustering. Note that here we have a couple of physical devices. We have a couple of devices on VMware, and we have an AWS device. Let's go to cluster these devices and give it a name. Uh, optionally a key. Now notice that we only see the VMware devices. We specify the network for the cluster link and which to interface to use as the VTAP. Now we could add one node at a time or we can do it all at once. Let's add the second node at the same time. Now the management center is going to take the two nodes that we already registered and build a cluster out of them. This will take a bit of time, but we'll speed it up. Notice we've got a one node cluster already. So it's, it's got the control node there. It doesn't look like it's got the other node. So let's just wait a little bit longer. Let's uh, look at the details of the configuration on at least one of the nodes. First of all, you can see the VNI. This is going to be the interface that the cluster is going to communicate over. The NVE is going to perform the encapsulation of the cluster control link. Notice that the NVE references the VTAP. This is the interface that the cluster is going to communicate to other nodes through. And the VNI references the NVE. And we see that we've successfully built a two node cluster. Now let's do a public cloud cluster. Notice that we have our private cluster. We have a couple physical devices, but we don't have any AWS devices yet. This is because we built the cluster through that day zero information. Now let's register one of the nodes. Notice that we do not have to register the other node. That will be done through the auto registration. Now we add a node. Notice we're not adding a cluster. We're adding a node. At this point, we don't even specify that it is a cluster. That will be discovered. And notice it immediately sees that it's registering a node of a cluster. And it builds the cluster. Notice at this point, we've registered one of the nodes, but we still haven't registered the other node, but that will be discovered. So we wait, and sure enough, we see the other node registered. Let's take a look. Well, it isn't quite registered. It looks like it's in progress still, so we have to wait a little bit longer. There we go. Now both nodes are registered, and we now finish the cluster configuration in the FMC. Notice that the nodes have two VNIs. The first is for the cluster link. The second is to communicate to the gateway load balancer. Notice the uh, proxy is enabled. In this case, we have two NVEs because we are talking to a gateway load balancer, one using Geneve, and then the cluster controlling NVE does the VXLAN encapsulation. And with that, I conclude my
demonstration. Thank you very much for your time.